So, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the today's PI interviews. My name is Gerrit Rose from the University Hospital in Basel. It's now my great pleasure to introduce Marietta Pecheva from Bulgaria and also Professor Stefan Engelter, the PI of the Estral trial, and Bruce of Vergeli um, for the today's interview. So, Stefan, first of all, congratulations on your tremendous effort and your success in completing the large trial Estral. Uh, which is really a huge effort and you conducted in Switzerland as an IICT trial with over 600 patients, right? So for those who potentially missed your talk today, could you just shortly summarize what is the rational and design of Estrel? Yeah. Estrel stands for Enhancement of Stroke Rehabilitation with Levodopa. And the idea behind the trial was to test with whether Levodopa given in addition to rehabilitation therapy would lead to a better motor outcome than uh, uh, placebo. Right, and they, have you really chosen levodopa and no other substance? What was the rationale that, behind that's levodopa? That's an interesting question. Levodopa is the precursor of dopamine and is our uh, power hormone, our mood um, booster, and also it facilitates motor learning. More importantly, levodopa uh, is a known and safe remedy for Parkinson's disease. And uh, everyone who has seen the film Awakening knows the beneficial effect uh, which levodopa has on the motor system. True. And this is potentially also why you've chosen the Fugelmeier scale score. I mean, we all are used to the most modified Rankine scale score normally in yeah. stroke trials. So you yeah. really chose the Fugelmeier scale score. Could yeah. you just comment? on this primary outcome? Yes, yes. Uh, the advantage of the Fugelmeier score is its higher granularity. That mm -hmm. means f uh, smaller um, benefits could be detected which nevertheless matter to the patients. Therefore, we can detect uh, advantages which, is, which are not detectable by the, by the model, by the MRS. By the MRS, right, okay. Yeah. So what are then the main results of Estra? The placebo group uh, in the Estral trial recovered really well. They almost doubled the, their uh, initial, initial uh, Fugelmeier total score at three months. The levodopa group did the same. They also recovered well, but not better than the, the levodopa group. Okay, so it's a neutral trial, so to speak. Yes. And um, would you then say, okay, the story of levodopa, this idea, which makes a lot of sense, or actually, is actually dead then, or? Is there more to discover, or what is your take on that? Despite the neutral results, Estrell can be see also seen as the beginning um, of a new perspective. Rather than one size fits all, uh, Estrell should be seen as a, a, as a platform, as a research platform, yeah. be because it integrates a lot of data beyond clinical uh, data, such as genetics, biomarkers, imaging data. I see. So there's a lot to discover even more. So actually, we really had tremendous advantages in the last decade in the stroke field, but stroke rehabilitation is lacking really a little bit behind. Or what is your take on that? Yes, Estrel uh, could be seen as an as an, an a means to uh, to open up no novel avenues for targeting uh, rehabilitation and to render uh, uh, it more individualized, even on the molecular level potentially, right? Yes, yeah. I think that's, that's the ultimate goal and mm -hmm. therefore I would uh, say that uh, the re awakening of stroke irritation is just postponed. Fascinating, thank you very much. Okay, then Marietta. Thank you very much, so it's my pleasure uh, to welcome you, for, uh, Professor Viergele, for mm -hmm. and congratulations for conducting such an important study. Thank As you. we understand, uh, this is the first study conducted with three components at the same time. Uh, in Ghana, uh, so congratulations, you. really. May you summarize uh, how you uh, how the idea of the study came, how it evolved from the initial study, what are the main concepts? Absolutely, and thank you, and uh, all credit to my team members, actually, for the uh, successful conduct of the trial. But having said that, the background to this on one side, in terms of it being challenging, was one, the burden of stroke in Africa is heavy and it's rising. Uh, number two, risk factor control after an index stroke in Africa is extremely poor. 
And then number three, there's fragmentation of care. So um, there's a brain drain going on. They don't have enough physicians or neurologists there. We also know that people are too poor to afford many of the uh, medications and things they need to do to uh, reduce their risk factors after a stroke. The promising aspects of the background were that number one, that uh, there is a uh, high mobile phone penetration in the region. Again, a region that has limited resources, but mobile phones are quite pervasive. Uh, number two is the fact that the country where we did the study, Ghana, has a national health insurance system. So potentially with a positive study, you can uh, scale it up throughout the entire country of 30 million people. And then finally, we had a pilot trial that showed a trend that this intervention, which comprised uh, the use of nurses, actually uh, managing blood pressure each week with patients who received home blood pressure monitoring devices, also giving them educational messages about cardiovascular risk reduction as well, and then helping with the help of the doctors, the few doctors there, to actually uh, titrate their blood pressure medications to be below 140 um, millimeters of mercury systolic, um, uh, and the primary outcome was uh, at 12 months. And so what we found essentially was that in terms of those who received this three-pronged intervention, that 67% uh, of them actually achieved uh, systolic blood pressure less than 140 at 12 months compared to the usual care, which it was 43. And the usual care, um, just to be, make sure we were being ethical, we made sure that the usual care um, also had these messages delivered to them as well. So essentially it was the nurse component that was the big difference between both groups. And also the mobile uh, part? Uh, and the mobile part as well. Okay. So the mobile part uh, 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 incorporated text messages uh, to remind people to take their medications and measure their blood pressure. But also we left messages once a week on their phones about um, uh, 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 lifestyle practices, uh, diet, physical activity, and things like that as well. So it, it is a successful, a successful, very successful study, and uh, as you already presented, uh, so what do you think are the key factors that contributed to this? Whether and what is the role of the nurse in here? Uh, in yeah, no. So the role of the nurse is a huge one again because thankfully um, nurse training is shorter and they are much more prevalent in the region. So what we're hoping is that we can get more and more nurses to uh, receive this training, and this might be incorporated into pro-stroke care in Ghana generally. Now, we do have implementation outcomes that look at affordability, access, adoption, things like that. We are still going through those are tertiary outcomes. So we're hoping that in looking at that, we might be able to identify aspects of the intervention that might have driven its positive effects. And so that will also help as we scale it up, we might be able to emphasize those parts as opposed to some other parts that maybe didn't um, actually contribute to the positivity of the intervention. May you also share what challenges you met uh, during uh, conducting such an important right. study? Right, so um, we uh, were able to have 82% of the um, uh, recruited participants um, actually completed the study. It was an intention to treat by design, so it was still positive on that and on the on protocol. But having said that, uh, in a region that is not as used to this type of research, it was challenging, but from experience having done other work there, we really engaged the community quite a bit to make sure they understood what we were doing. So that was very, very helpful uh, as well. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, may you say uh, how these uh, results could be transformed to other risk factors? Yeah, no, so potentially it could be. Now, um, one of the things we did before we did this trial was to take a look at this issue of mobile um, phone penetration in the region and to see what studies were out there. So there are lots of studies on diabetes already. There are lots of studies on uh, uh, cancer prevention already, uh, but not as many on hypertension. And the few that were there were either pilot studies or they were short term. And so what we uh, think is that since diabetes studies have been done, not in stroke populations, they could potentially be incorporated into this model. Now, again, because the population attributable risk is 90%, uh, hypertension is the elephant in the room, so to speak. And again, with communities for whom we're providing health literacy, we don't want to overwhelm them with too much messaging and everything. So, but I think the potential is there, but I would, I would take it one step at a time, um, trying to incorporate this, trying to see what the drivers are, trying to scale it up throughout the country, and, and then see if we could add on these other aspects to have a more global risk reduction strategy. Yes, and we see that uh, you uh, really very nice reach uh, the primary outcome, but may you say how this will transform to, uh, to the stroke recurrence, to the major adverse cardiac events? Uh? Yeah, no, so uh, we think it will. I mean, we didn't have the 
uh, resources to do a study that was powered to look at hard outcomes. Nonetheless, again, with the strong link between um, hypertension, in particular systolic blood pressure, we suspect that this will translate to reducing not just the burden of stroke, but hopefully uh, reducing the burden of other cardiovascular events as well. So we, we expect, just because we know the biology and we know the, uh, uh, the uh, natural history of things like this, that this will ultimately translate to, to, to uh, preventing heart events as well. Okay. I also want to ask you, uh, because you are founding president of the Society for Equity in Neuroscience, so uh, how, what kind of advice is you could uh, provide from your experience uh, providing a study uh, in a low and middle income resources? Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's, of course, a very difficult, thank you for asking me that question. It's a very difficult situation, but I think there are several things. I think start small. It's never too... Um, um, uh, 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 little to start small to get little pilot data and then network quite a bit. This, uh, what we presented today was a decade in the making and it started very, very small with pilot data, publishing little by little, applying for grants little by little, being rejected little by little, but of course culminated in today. So that's what I would advise anybody trying to narrow disparities or eliminate inequities in stroke in an underserved region or in a disparate population, to start small and seek partners and take it step by step. What do you feel the next step of the study will be? Yes, and so we want to, one, analyze the implementation outcomes uh, to see what the drivers of the positive effects of the intervention are. We are still following the patients, to your point, to see if we can capture hard events and to see if they will stick with this, to see if two years after the index event that their blood pressure will be better controlled than usual care. And then the other thing is, in this study, based on our historical studies and based on the guidelines at the time, we aimed for a systolic blood pressure of less than 140. But what we'd like to do is go with where the evidence is and go for less than 130. So a larger, more definitive study, and a study that can actually get more people under control. High 60s percent sounds great, but it's not good enough. And so we'd like to go for even more if we can. Okay, congratulations Thank once you. again Thank for you. conducting such an important study and providing such important messages. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure that uh, they, there are uh, many messages that could be provided not only in low and middle income resources, but also in, uh, in Europe and also globally. Agreed. Agreed. Thank, <laughs> Thank you so you. much. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank much. You. So two studies really in uh, fields that are really not getting much attention mm -hmm. in, in the past, yeah. right? So absolutely fascinating studies. Thank you very much for being here and uh, have a great conference. Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For grateful for having the chance to, to be and here. And thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you.